in the last hours or so, I do believe that Utah is open to speaking to the Big 12. I maintain. I have not one time spoken to our sources at Utah where they have been excited about A, even having the conversation and certainly not be leaving the conference behind, Jake. I would be stunned if Utah made the decision to leave the conference. Yeah, you know, I I, I think that Utah doesn't want to leave the Pac-12, but again, my opinion is unchanged. I, I, they're being forced. You're being put in a position where you begin to understand that Utah is a great institution, and and I believe they're one of the most underrated institutions uh, in our country, honestly. Like, when you look at education, the medical side, athletics, um, you know, obviously education, again, like, the whole setup is is spot on. It's top notch. Now, are they Stanford educationally? No. Are they some, you know, are they Harvard? No. But they're really quality, man. And any conference in this in the Power Five would be happy to have Utah. That said, Utah takes education very seriously in terms of their opinion and philosophy on how important it is. So the Big 12, the issue with the Big 12 is that the Big 12 is not nearly as strong of an educational conference as the Pac-12 is slash might be was after the meetings tomorrow. So so Utah is sitting here in this TV deal nonsense being forced to weigh educational importance versus total uh, monetary wealth importance. Meaning, hey, if we can go to the Big 12, let's say, and get 31.7, that's going to be better than 20 or 24.9. If we can, let's say, get to the Big 10, and we can get whatever their number would be there after it's all said and done, right? More than the Big 12, certainly. That's obviously going to be a big deal. But again, it comes back to this educational piece. So if you're Utah and you're looking at these two conferences, I would agree the Big 12 is not number one. I would say for Utah, philosophically speaking, on education, the Big 10 would be number one if, and again, if they're looking at moving conferences. And I maintain, again, they don't want to leave the pack. But George isn't really giving them another option at this point. That's the hard part. Yeah, and I I think when you look at these situations, if you will, it's really interesting to me. Excuse me. Sorry about that. It's really interesting to me that, again, Utah's been very quiet. And what have we learned through this process? Those that move in silence are making moves. And that's my hope. I feel optimistic, right? If if, If tomorrow... Or a week from today it comes out that Utah is going to the Big Ten, I would be ecstatic for Big Ten or for Utah fan. Even though, yes, admittedly, they are assholes on Twitter. Most of them, they are. For Utah itself as an institution, would be thrilled for Mark Harlan and Taylor Randall to have that type of opportunity in the Big Ten because it is any way you look at it a better opportunity. And if they if they want to sit here. And say, hey, yeah, educationally speaking, it's not as good of a conference. Okay, cool, man. But at some point, like I was just saying before, uh, like last hour, I was just saying, at some point in this position you've been put in, you're going to have to sacrifice something. And the but, natural, what, but what is that it's sacrifice? It's the educational quality of the conference. The yeah. Pac-12 is a leading educational conference in the country, right? Notice I didn't say they were best athletically. Yep. didn't say they make the most money. But educationally, they are incredibly strong. Yeah, we're- and and I, I can I can tell you just chatting with – I mean, people people text me all the time, but there are – when you get a text from somebody that you believe in, and I, I'm just – I'm telling you now, Utah wants nothing to do with this conference failing. Wow. I think Utah is going to stick this out until the end. I think Utah believes in this grouping. And I understand why. I understand why. I believe that Taylor Randall on the board of directors is just simply too late. I think if he had been on this board of directors six months ago, we're having a different conversation. Yeah, I mean, I, I have to say, I, again, yeah, maybe six months ago, sure. But but we're we're not there. We're here now. and And I think... If you're Taylor Randall, like, again, I'm not criticizing Taylor, but if if it ever comes out, if it were to ever come out that Utah waited too long, I would not have nice things to say because you can deal in what you want and what ifs and, man, I wish, but the reality is you're not in that position. Well, and the word, that I'm, the word that's being used is Utah's conversations in the last 10 days with the Big 12 have been, quote, tepid. Well, 
That's the word, which is... That's not exactly the word I'd like to be hearing. There is a... But, but again, there is a lack of enthusiasm from Utah leaving this conference. And I totally understand that. I don't... And I see the people in the comments and on Twitter saying Utah doesn't want to be seen following BYU. That's a bunch of malarkey. Yeah. That's, that's just not it. true. Yeah. I don't think that Utah is following BYU. I don't think that Utah is, you know, creeping to the... That's a bunch of BS. What I'm telling you is Utah has to do what's best for BYU to a certain extent because what's best for football in Utah certainly is, is best for Utah. But Utah's not going to make a move for or against BYU here. Yeah. Utah's going to do what Utah needs to do to secure its future. I do not for a second believe, and maybe I'm just the idiot, I do not for a second believe that Mark Harlan is a guy that's going to watch this conference go down in flames and be like, all right, I'm just going to be here on the deck of the Titanic playing my violin. Sorry, man. I know that guy to be an operator. I don't believe that Mark Harlan's a guy who's just going to make a move and or technically not make a move because, oh, I can't be seen trailing BYU to the Big 12. Oh, well, let's call a WCC. <laughs> that's not who Mark Harlan is. Mark Harlan's an operator. And furthermore... I think when I look at Taylor Randall, Taylor Randall has been one of the few guys in this conference. The president at Utah, Taylor Randall, has been one of the few guys in this conference that has actually facilitated progress in that he has gone behind the scenes and consistently built bridges and open communication lines to get conversations going, to, to seed progress, where everybody else has been F this and F that, and I'm really upset, and it just does not fit to me that these guys are going to go down and watch the Pac-12 burn. But having said that, I'd be really surprised if they were one of the first teams to jump off the ship. And I think Colorado, and maybe Dan Lanning's right to a certain extent, is Colorado a death blow to the Pac-12? It's not. It may have started, the, it may have put a hole in the, the, the bow of the ship. Mm-hmm. But if you lose Arizona, it's over. It's over. There's no conference without Arizona. And Mark Harlan and Taylor Randall can love this conference to death. If Arizona goes, Utah's got to go with them. Don't have a choice. They got to go with them. I completely agree. But I just don't know. And again, I, I apologize to be looking at my phone, but I'm also being told that they've told the Big 12 that Utah has told the Big 12 that they, they have an obligation to see numbers from the Pac-12 before they make any decisions. Okay, I can live with that. I don't disagree with that. I mean, Arizona's essentially said the same thing, yes. right? Bobby yes. Robbins said, hey, I know what the Big 12 number is. I got to see what the Pac-12's number is, and I can make a decision. Okay, cool. I'm fine with that. I am fine with that. Where I part ways when it comes to Utah is if they are too loyal. Yes. If, if, they, if, they, if their grip on the conference is too much, and the conference implodes, and you get stuck in the Mountain West, which I don't believe will happen. But if that were to happen, I'd have a huge issue with that. I don't know what it is. It, 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 it's frustrating because, and I'm not a Utah fan. I always get put into this box. Well, last week you were a BYU fan who's old and you're I'm, a, I'm an old and... fat Mormon, and that means I'm dying soon. Yeah. That's what Twitter told me. Yeah. Even though I'm not old, I'm not LDS, and I'm not a BYU fan. Yeah, But I always get put into these boxes. The issue that I have with this Utah conversation is they already, even at their best of times, don't get the respect they deserve. Mm -hmm. Kyle Whittingham is a top five football coach in the entire country. Top five. And he's doing it in a place where there are massive stigmas hanging over your school and your state. Massive stigmas. He is a BYU alum, which I think nine out of 10 people don't know. Yet he still goes into every economic situation, inner cities, single parent homes, rich neighborhoods, doesn't matter. And he routinely pulls the best football players and makes them usually excellent DBs, excellent linebackers, excellent defensive linemen. He's an excellent recruiter, an excellent head coach. And you don't, do you see him turning over his staff constantly? You don't. 
He runs a phenomenal football program. The stadium is full. It's newly renovated. They've won the Pac-12 two years in a row. They've played the Rose Bowl two years in a row. And nobody fucking knows it. And it's mind-blowing to me. Mm -hmm. Because that guy, Kyle Whittingham, and that program at Utah deserve better. Program. What Mark, what, what, what Taylor Randall and Mark Harlan have done there has been nothing short of spectacular. And nobody knows it. Yeah. And it it's a travesty. And it's all because this conference doesn't play on big game TV. Doesn't play on TV for its big games. Because it's garbage. They just don't. Yeah. And yet, Utah fan travels, Utah fan tailgates, Utah fan buys tickets, Utah fan puts money in the program, and nobody knows it. Nobody knows that Rice Eccles Stadium up in Salt Lake City is one of arguably the best home field advantages in any level of football. And, and, and I do think in fairness, and I don't disagree with anything you've said, I, I, I do think that Utah deserves criticism for not winning big games, though. They haven't exactly helped themselves. Out of conference well, games. They, you beat, when you beat USC 31 times in a row, and that includes your, your boy, Lincoln Riley, they win big games. They haven't beat Ohio State, they haven't beat Penn State, and they didn't beat Florida. That needs to change. They've got Baylor and Florida on the schedule early this year. You need to win those games. You need to win those games. We want to have a football conversation. Sure, they dominate the conference. They win big games. They beat Oregon. They, I mean, they, they, they sweep LA. Like you name it, they've done it. They haven't won out of conference games, postseason or regular season. They haven't won out of conference games, and it's inexplicable that that Cam Rising didn't throw that ball last year at Florida. Don't know how you explain that. No idea, but he didn't, and they didn't, and they yeah. lost. And, and it, now we're here. Probably kept him out of a college football playoff spot, if we're being honest. Yet Anthony Richardson plays for the Colts now. I don't know how you explain it, man. Yeah. I really don't. Uh, Clinton Weaver gives us $10 and says, walk me through why Fox wouldn't want Oregon and Washington in the Big 12. They have 40% liability in the Big 12 versus Big 10, having a higher liability. In Big 12, Fox would get Oregon and Washington at a better price, only they wouldn't. Because Oregon and Washington is probably a tier one game, and every tier one game in the Big 12 is in football is on ESPN. All of the biggest basketball games, yeah, those are on Fox. But I believe it's 65% of the football in, a, in most of the tier one is on ESPN. And it flipped that around for basketball. Yeah. So Fox, Fox just isn't interested in being a, a tier one, two partner in in the Pac-12. So, okay, what about the Big 12? They don't own the football property there. ESPN does. Why do you think the pro rata is in the ESPN portion of the contract? Yeah. Now, a lot of sources have told us repeatedly, Fox pretty much has an unwritten pro rata where they have they have said, yeah, hey, let's let's grow the conference. Yep, let's do it. So I, I don't I don't think Fox would stand in the way. Yeah, I think Fox would be thrilled because it doesn't matter if you're 65 football or 65 basketball, you're 100% of something in the Big 12. Mm -hmm. So you'd be happy to have them. Uh, Tom Dean for two bucks says, Big 12 gets Colorado, Arizona, Oregon, and Washington, ACC, Pac-6. I, I just don't see Oregon and Washington going. Not to the Big 12. Again, I could be totally wrong about this. I the Utah thing is is the best example of this. I am completely perplexed by it. What? Them, them their affinity or what? Their move not move situation. Yeah. Yeah. It's it is I, It's disappointing for me. I I, I not, wish But it's not disappointing. Well, it's it is it is just having perspective. And we talk about perspective all the time in life, whether you're a golfer an engineer or an athletic director. Perspective is the whole damn thing because for Utah, their number one priority is not athletics. It's not now and it never has been athletics. But at some point you have to do what's best for athletics. And I think Utah will do that. I just don't think they want to be the ones that are like, yeah, man, we're out. Yep, let's do this thing right now. Because I'll be honest with you. 
The next team that leaves this conference ends this conference. They, they end it. But we've been told repeatedly that Brett Yormark doesn't want to double dip. He want, I think he wants one more group, and that's it. Three more teams. That's it. I think that's it. He's not going to keep going back, waiting for Oregon and Washington to get no invite from the Big Ten. Yeah. And as, as we reported today earlier in the show, the Big 12 is, is, look at the title of the show, the Big 12's tired of waiting for Pac-12 Pac teams. I think they're tired of waiting. Yeah. I think tomorrow's the Alamo in the, in the Pac-12. Pac-10. That meeting at, at 9 o'clock goes well or it's over. Period. Uh, Tom Osborne, BYU is an app, or BY is an absolute shark. Klyovkov is a, hmm, well, he may be. He may be. I don't think Brett Yormark's a shark. I think Brett Yormark is an opportunist. Because if he were a shark, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Yeah. Right? We would not. be. The conference would be dead already. Yeah, I think Brett Yormark is savvy. I think he understands how to get things done, but doing it in the right way. A shark would just go in and take the teams and, and not be done care. With it. Yeah, and not care. Yeah, root would, shark would be more akin to being ruthless. Let's see, Jeff Schwartz apparently. Um, details on a potential media deal for the Pac-12: twenty million per school and mostly streaming. And this apparently is through Jason Shear at 24-7. Well, we've been telling you that for... A long time. A long time. Yeah, I, I mean, we've been on... We've told you two things. $25 million a year is the benchmark. If it's below that, schools are leaving. If it's above that, they're staying. Oof. And we've told you that we, we have been told it's 19.7 and it's mostly streaming. So we've been told. If this is a $200 million deal, it's over. It's over. If this is $20 million, because the number we've had for months and months and months, $19.7 million. Yeah. If it's a 20, and let's just round it up to $20 million. If it's a $20 million deal, it's over. Because there's no way to spin $11.7 million in deficit to Washington State. There's no way to go to Arizona and say, hey, why don't you take an $11.7 million haircut by staying in the Pac-12? Because if it's $20 million in the Pac-12 and it's 31.7 in the Big 12, which we already know, I'm just going to go back to the Bobby Robbins statement. Because what did Bobby tell Dennis Dodd? Good old Bobby. What did, what did Bobby say? I know the number in the, uh, the Big 12's number. I just need to hear what the Pac-12's number is. Then I can make a decision. Well, here, let me help you out. If it's, if it's $20 million, it's over. It's over. And this is, this is, by the way, Jeff Schwartz, who I used to work with at ESPN, who is Pac-12 today on Sirius XM, saying that it's $20 million per school, I, I'm just, it's over, dude. Yeah. If that's the number. See, that number, so this is what I mean. That number right there, as far as this Utah conversation, gives them no option. You're leaving. You, you, you did, it might, and by the way, it's not a want to or not want to thing at that point. You deserve better. Athletics, institutionally speaking, like the whole deal. You can't run a Power 5 athletic department on a $20 million mostly streaming deal. Because if you're getting $20 million a year on your streaming deal, on your media rights deal, it's all stream. You're not going to be able to recruit. You're not going to be able to monetize and leverage your stadium because those stadium deals are not for the people who come to the game. Those stadium deals are for the people watching the game because they need to be able to see your signage. They need to be able to see your logos on the field. And oh, by the way, if you're all on stream and my guess, if it's 200 million, that's probably an Apple deal. And if, if Jason Shear, I guess it, 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 it um, whatever wildcat authority or whatever the hell his thing is, he's the one reporting this. Now I don't have a, um, 
I don't have a subscription to Jason Shear's stuff. But if it's $20 million a year, see ya. it's over. There's there's no saving that. Yeah, that's that to me is definitive. There is no saving that. It's over. Yeah. It, at that point, there's just no way to how do you how you do go. you sell that? Yeah. I, and, and I think, you know, again, let's not undersell the other portion of it, right? Obviously 20 million is a problem, but mostly streaming's the other problem. Mm. I mean, if he brought 50 mil and mostly streaming, I think they'd do it just because it's 50 mil. But even at 30. Mostly streaming is a huge problem for these presidents. They are not amused by that. At thirty million, you could say, "Well, hey, we're making what the ACC and the Big Twelve are making." At twenty million, and streaming, Come and on. it's you're you're done. Come on, dude, it's over. And this is this is what I was saying earlier in the show in the first hour. For those of you who missed it, dude, if George Klyovkov had a, a an eighty twenty linear deal like a, an 80-20 traditional TV with just a small piece of streaming deal that was $25.1 million, we wouldn't be sitting here talking about this. Well, and you know the other thing that comes to mind? Let's project this out a little bit. If it's 80, if it's, excuse me, $20 million a year, $200 million, and it's mostly streaming, and let's say ESPN gets a game a week, that'd be my guess. You got to pay to produce the games. Great point. Because that's Apple TV. <laughs> so you're paying to produce the games. MLS produces the games. NASCAR is going to produce Xfinity for CW. Yep. You think all of a sudden Apple's going to turn into a production company? They're not. You got to pay to produce those games. So you're not going to net $200 million a year. And... The other question is, if it's Apple TV, you'll never know your subscriber numbers or they'll never be public. So, because MLS doesn't publicize them and they have an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement with, with Apple TV, because Apple TV does not want people knowing their subscriber numbers. Yeah. So, you're in real trouble here. You're in real trouble here. That's a huge problem. By the way, you know what else came out of Apple TV today? I think on the Marshan uh, newsletter, they have 135,000 season ticket subscribers, which mean free subscription to Apple MLS Pass. Yeah. They thought it would be significantly more than that. But it turns out that if you're a family of four, you get one subscription to MLS Pass on Apple TV. So it's not four subscriptions for four different seats. Yeah. It's one subscription for four seats. So it's far less than the total number of tickets sold. Yeah. So I, I don't I, know, man. I also think another interesting point when we compare the pack and the MLS deal, the MLS deal is 10, 10 years, $2.5 billion, right? $250 million a year for 10 years. Oof. Think about that in comparison to the pack. It makes sense, right? If you think about, okay... 20 per school per year for five years. Gross. I mean, that's right in the same ballpark on scale. I mean, like, you know, again, it's an entire league. It's a, you know, a nine, 10 team league in college football that it would make sense that it would be less than the MLS deal, but you get what I'm saying, right? It's right in that same operating space. So I don't know. I, I wouldn't be surprised. It, I mean, again, I would you say Jeff Schwartz and Jason Shear, whatever reporting yes. this, like, you know, again, if it's stream heavy and it's and it's nineteen point seven, that does admittedly Ooh. scream Apple TV. It does. Those numbers add up to Apple TV. That's not good. So when you're turning down the CW regional deal, when you turn down, and it goes all the way back to ESPN and Fox coming in these two conferences to merge, and the Pac-12 said no. It and goes all the way back. I also think this plays to ESPN and Apple making a partnership. Well. Because, yeah, I, I, you can't stream your tier one games. You cannot. No. There's no chance you can do that. There's no chance. I am curious. If it's, if it's Apple and ESPN, Apple gets a game, or excuse me, ESPN gets a game for linear on ESPN 
ESPN2 or ABC. They get a game for ESPN+. Plus. That's two. Yeah. And then my guess is Apple would get three games because you'd have 10 teams in this league. You'd, you'd have three games on Apple, two games on ESPN. You're going to die. You're, you are going to suffocate because you just don't have carriage. And now people are going to have to wonder, well, where's the game? Hey, well, can't, where's the – well? You, oh, oh, it's another app I have to get. So if you're Utah, obviously every player and every athlete is going to get a free subscription in the conference. Right. But your fan base, your, your, half your fan base isn't going to be able to – this is going to be – like for Utah, this is a nightmare because it's the Utah Jazz deal all over again where your games aren't available locally. So if you live in Salt Lake City, imagine this. You're done. The Utah Jazz just rolled out. Hey, we're going to be on on Channel 2 here, I believe it is, KUTV, local TV station here in Salt Lake. But we're also, if you're not in the Salt Lake market, going to gonna roll out an app experience and different tiers and all that good stuff. So if you're a sports fan in Salt Lake, you've got BYU, who's obviously an ESPN property. You've got Utah, that's unknown in this deal, would be on Apple, let's say. Uh, you've got the Utah Jazz, who are on local TV. If you're not in the market, that's going to be their app. Um, if you are a Major League Baseball fan, you have to watch it on Major League Baseball app unless you have Direct TV because yes. YouTube TV doesn't carry Major League Baseball. If you're a soccer fan in Salt Lake, now you've also got to have Apple TV. So you can see how it would start to add up. And I haven't even gotten to Hulu, Netflix, or Amazon Prime yet. It's getting heavy, dude. Apple is not an option for the Pac-12 Man, at that number. Yeah, now this is terrifying. If Jason Shear, and again, we don't know Jason personally. I mean, he he very much is connected at Arizona. Yeah. Um, if he's correct, and it's $20 million a year and mostly streaming. It's brutal. It's a terrible deal. And unfortunately, it's exactly the deal we've reported for well over about a year now. That's the, I believe... Back in October, that's the first deal we ever reported. And said it would be, it would be, but it was supposed to be with Amazon. Yeah. And George kept asking for, hey, I believe he asked for $350 million a year from Amazon. Hello, and here, man. Then, hey, this is the Amazon versus ESPN that never materialized. He thought ESPN and Amazon would get into a bidding war. And ESPN was like, nah, bro, we're not going to compete with them because they're not competition for us. Which I agree with. And a a Amazon said, nah, dude, we just want a Friday night game of the week, man. That's it. Ooh. This could be this could be rough. And by the way, let's not let's not fall in love with the idea that this is only on Saturdays. Cause I have to believe that somebody is gonna play a Friday night game in the Pac twelve. Haven't they always? Yes. Haven't they always? Yes. And I have to think that part of this deal would be a Friday night game for somebody. So dude, this is a, this is a rough way to do business because what comes to mind there, not to just keep rambling, but if ESPN's if ESPN's game is Friday night, that's going to be really rough because then all of your Saturday contents on Apple TV. Now that makes sense to me because Apple's been very clear we want it all. And what do you get with MLS? You get all of it except you get a game every seventy two years on Fox which nobody knows is ever on Fox. It seems like ESPN will do Friday night Pac-12 and all the rest of the Pac-12 content will be on Apple TV. Yeah. Ooh, that's ugly. That That's ugly. If it's 20 million bucks, man, I hope I, I've never said this before, but man, I hope I'm wrong because if it's 20 million bucks, this conference is dead in the water. Yeah. There is just no other way to, there's no, no other way, way to describe it, bro. it. J-Rod says the Pac-12 equals the Southwest Conference. Ooh, you better hope not. You better hope not. Tom Dean, uh, Big 12, first three Pac-12 schools to jump, get in, no Washington State. I don't think that's it because I don't, I don't, I'm not confident. I'm not confident that Oregon and Washington want to go to the Big 12. I'm just not confident in that. Yeah. And I think that, I think if he had his druthers, Right, your mark would add Arizona, Arizona State, and Utah, and be done with it, and be it, be it, 
be at 16 teams for the next five years. I think if he had his druthers, that's what it would be. You know, could be wrong. Maury Alvarez, the great Floridian for $2. Are you getting BYU-Utah players for the season? We're working on it. Working on it. Uh, OG Gary, a.k.a. Big Ten Ute. I would be afraid of Utah fans' ego if we get to the Big Ten. Oh, if you get to the Big Ten, talk you, all the shit you want to talk, yeah, dude. Yeah, you should. You should. You should. I agree. You should. Yeah. Uh, Curtis, where does uh, Colorado rank in education? Colorado. I have to pull that up. I don't know off the top of my head. But I'm pretty certain that Colorado, Colorado's a good, not great, Let's see. Let me roll down here. Get off my screen. You pop up advertisers. Uh, the Pac-10. As I scroll, number too far. forty-three in the country. Number forty-three in the country. Thank you. There you go. Um, they are not. No, ninety-seventh. Average ranking ninety-seven. Here anyway, and I can tell you this is um, from twenty twenty-two. Where are you seeing that? Uh, I'm seeing this on U.S. News for 23-24. Average ranking, as I see it in the Pac-12 right now, Stanford third in the country, Cal 20th, Washington 55th, Colorado 97th, Arizona, Oregon, and Utah 105th, Arizona State 121, Oregon State 151, Washington State 212. Yeah. In the Big 12... You have, come on, uh, their average is 148th. Baylor 77, BYU 89, TCU 89, Kansas 121, Iowa State 127. Here's where the fall off happens. UCF 137, Cincy 151, K-State 166, West Virginia 234. Yeah. Texas Tech 219, Okie State 182, Houston 182. It's a huge fall off. Yep. Huge fall off. Colorado, Boulder's a great place to get an education. Yeah. They, there, is, there is no doubt about that. Uh, Cowboy Country, look at the videos I did last year. So now we're promoting our channels. Uh, Utah is a great stadium. Winningham is a proven winner. Utah is a great add to the new Big 16. Yeah, I think, yeah. Okay. Tom Dean. Uh, I read that one already. My bad. Uh, I meant to click this one. 20 million or... Oregon and Washington are leaving for the big something. If it's $20 million, yeah. Daniel Dixon says Apple TV is now included with App, uh, Apple Music. Yeah, they have what's called Apple One, where you get everything. Okay. So, you know. Michael Trules for $2. Any chance the ACC tries to grab Oregon and Washington? Why would you do that? Yeah, it doesn't make them any sense, dude. Yeah, the travel's I don't see just that. too much. Yeah. Uh, Corey Erickson, could you could reason Utah is not scheduled a special board meeting be because they already have one scheduled for August eighth? Could be. You don't have that much time. You don't have that much time. This is going to be over in a couple of days. This will be over this week. Yeah. In my opinion, one way or the other. There, there's no other way to to look at it. Brigham's boy, uh, boys gives us five dollars. Whittingham's salary is six to eight million. If Utah doesn't get into the Big Twelve and goes to the Mountain West. Can they afford him? Could this be his last year? I. Kyle's not coaching anywhere else. If he doesn't coach at Utah, he's going to retire. Yeah, I would agree. Um, and you'll figure out six to eight minutes. I can't see him going to the Mountain West. No. Nah. I'm telling you, that. they're not going to the Mountain West. They will figure it out. B for $5. FSU regents have interesting agenda for Wednesday meeting. They're voting to set up a new direct support group and a loan for funding. Okay. If you're in the ACC, you're going to have a hell of a time getting out of your grant to rights. In fact, you're not going to get out of your grant to rights. So I think you have to be creative. You do. So that is an interesting yeah. agenda item. Boss Frog, what's up, my guy, for $10? Could it be your Mark used Dinich's report of adding one more school happy with 14 last Thursday meant to add pressure to the remaining schools or rush Costanza to present a proposal? Oh, I think we openly talked about that on the show. 
George Costanza. We we funny. we openly talked about that on the show. Yeah, I mean it's right up right your Mark's alley to do something like that. I mean again, this guy this guy's an operator. He's not you know you remember that comment earlier about is Brett a shark? No, he's not a shark in that sense. He he's much more of a he is much more of an operator. He he yes. is doing things in silence behind the scenes that are setting up other plays down the road. Yes. So yeah, it, could he have you know uh, given Heather Dinich? a word off the record that then she used as a source, let's say. Yeah, that that could have happened, absolutely. Um, I can tell you I, I'm not confident in that because I know based on what Heather Dinich reported last week or the week before that, you know, based on the reporting and the verbiage used, she was talking to Kirk Schultz up at Washington State. So I, I, I don't know, if, you know, if that changed or whatever. But, yeah, I mean, Brett, mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if Brett did something like that. So a... Uh... A guy that I know is asking me how much power Mark Harlan has at Utah because there is a belief that Mark Harlan is, in fact, working behind the scenes. Oh, I think he's, I mean, I think he's got a pretty good amount. I mean, you wouldn't extend him and keep him, uh, you know, you know, have that kind of commitment to somebody if you don't believe in them and, and allow them to work. And I do think that there's a reason that Mark Harlan is the guy sitting up on the panel, if you will, of the three at at Pac-12 Football Media Day, right? It was Mark Harlan. It, it wasn't anybody else. It wasn't, you know, someone from Oregon or whoever. It was Mark Harlan. So I have no doubt that Mark Harlan has power. I think that Mark Harlan and Taylor Randall have an outstanding relationship and they work together to get things done. And I think that Mark Harlan is uniquely aware of the fact that Utah is not just a football school. He wishes that, I know for a fact, he wishes they were better in basketball. But Utah is an opportunity or a proposition for another conference where where Mark Harlan can say, hey, yeah, we're really good in football, but look at all the other stuff we're really good at too. We can bring value in other ways in the athletic department on top of medical and educational and all that other good stuff. Yeah, it's just very interesting the conversations happening about Utah at this moment. Uh, I Very fine line, dude. Utah cannot get left out in the wind, and I don't think they will. I'm not trying to say I think they will. I think they will make a decision and they will find their they way, but it just is risky. They are on a precarious perch, dude. Yes. Uh, Charles Spellman. Hi, Charles, for $10. Thank you. The Pac-12 fumbling the bag on half the con- a continent world, continent-wide conference. Hello? The Pac-12 fumbling the bag on a half a continent-wide conference 10 years ago and even two years ago is crazy. Big 12 Cyclone here, happy for my team, but not for college football as a whole. Well, you're not wrong about the big, the Pac-12 fumbling. Yeah. The Pac-12, as we have talked about multiple times, I mean, they, they have had absolute opportunity to end the Big 12 multiple times and just, I think, got hosed by Carol Fault at USC once. Thanks. And I think just made the wrong decision with BYU when this conference expanded. Yeah. Not adding BYU, and I'm one of the people, I trace it right back to that. Not adding BYU was when you knew the decision-making in this conference was very questionable. They, I worked at a national network when that happened, and people were like, wow, really? Because at the time... Utah was a really solid ad. They, you know, the original BCS busters, like, but it was really surprising that BYU got left behind. Yeah. And the slandering and the, wow, they don't play on Sundays in their tidy whitey underwear. Again, like, here's that word again, arrogance. That slant, that arrogance and slandering, today it's coming back to roost. Because if BYU was in the Big 12, the ESPN relationship's better, the money-making re- relationship's better, I think BYU's football program would be much further along, so their TV audiences would be much better. It, it was a huge mistake. The value that that brand would have brought would have made it very difficult to keep the Pac-12 off of TV. Yeah. And they chose not to do it. And, I mean, that would be like choosing not to to take bucked-up energy with you everywhere you go. Seriously. It, it's killing you, Right. Um, You guys, I can't say enough about Bucked Up and how much it's helped me be healthier. Uh, I have, as I've espoused on the show, I'm pushing 40 pounds of weight loss now. And it's because I'm sleeping better, because I'm eating better, because my hunger's in control, because 
of the brand new protein bars. And I hate protein bars, but the Buck Bar is phenomenal. It is good. It is the word that comes to mind is it is absolutely a treat. It's like a candy bar and it keeps you full because the number one ingredient in a Buck Bar, whey protein isolate, the purest form of, of whey protein you can get. I'm telling you, get in the description of this YouTube show below, get the free sampler pack. They're going to give you a sampler pack of their new buck bars sent right to your door for free. Get the, get the link to get the free buckshot samples sent right to your door. 200 grams, uh, milligrams of caffeine, long lasting, clean energy that gives you a mental lift. It's fantastic for that one o'clock carb crash after lunch. Mm -hmm. They just work. I take buckshot every time I golf. When I make the turn at the ninth, I take my buckshot and I almost unanimously can tell you my back, my back nines are better than my front nines. And it's so much so that I've always, I've, I've tried to tell myself, well, take your buckshot before you tee off. And I always forget to do that, but I'm, I got to do it this weekend up at Canyons because my front nines at Canyons have been horrendous, mm -hmm. but buckshot just worked. Get healthy with really good ingredients and products that simply work. At buckedup.com, use the promo code MONTY20 to get 20% off your purchase at buckedup.com. Uh, let's run through your comments here. Oh, boy. The Utah fan on this show is in. Not feeling good about this, Monty. Greg Hawkins says. Oh, boy. I believe our administration will be too slow to pivot, and we will be left behind. Look at the difference between George Klyovkov and Brett Yormark. It should be obvious we should go. Well, I can tell you I'm sitting here while we're doing the show um, talking to several people, which is hard to do, but one of my guys in the TV industry is telling me that Mark Harlan um, is trying to get it done um, to at least have the – and the verbiage being used, I don't want to be direct because I don't want to expose anybody, but essentially he's saying – Hey, Mark Harlan knows that they have to have the conversation. Damn right he does. Now, I have not confirmed that with Utah. I have DM Mark Harlan. I have asked him on the show. I've asked to have an offline conversation with him. Utah has unanimously said no. Every single time I've asked to have him. I am telling you what sources are telling me, which is Mark Harlan understands that Utah has to have the conversation now. Yeah. And... Last, last Thursday was an absolute game changer. Mark Harlan was on that call, as was Taylor Randall. Do you, see, do you guys see what I mean? They're being forced. You're being put into a position where you, where, you, where you are left with no decision but to say, hey, we don't want to do this, but George, you're not giving us another— You're not uh, helping us. You're not helping us. You're not giving us any sign of hope. Um and and clearly we we can definitively say now that that Utah is in a position where they have to have secondary plans set up. You, you just have to. And and I think again, kind of what you said. Why did we title the show what we titled the show today? The Big Twelve is tired of waiting for Pac-12 schools to make a decision or to 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 take action. And so Utah, I think, has to be aware of this concept. Like again, if 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 it's coming out. That Utah is being is now open to the idea that they need to have conversations with the Big Twelve. That means one of two things: either they were completely shut off to talking to conferences altogether, or they've had co uh, conversations with with like let, let's say the Big Ten, and they know what the opportunity is there. And clearly, that opportunity is not one they like. And so now they know they need to talk to the Big Twelve because they know what this deal looks like, and they're waiting for confirmation tomorrow during this meeting. To which I say, okay. We're getting these comments about the Mountain West five, six minutes ago or whenever it was. They're not going to the Mountain West. I'm just telling you guys now that's never going to happen. They, I, I have to believe that, that they're going to set up contingency plans. You have to be prepared. And I can just, I will say this as clearly as I can say it. And I am trying to get confirmation. I am trying to get a comment from Utah. But I can only say this as clearly as I can without comment from Utah. And I want to make that very clear. I have not spoken to Utah. I have asked, they have not answered. But what our sources are telling us is that Utah has not ignored the Big 12. Now, Ian Fitzsimmons from ESPN is reporting that Utah is not returning phone calls. 
and not communicating with the Big 12. I am told that is not the case. I am told that their communications have been tepid is the word that was used to me. And that Utah has told the Big 12, we are committed to seeing the numbers in the TV deal. And we are at a point now where based on what we've seen here, those numbers should come out tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Pacific time. So that excuse now goes away. I have to believe from what I know of the way that Mark Harlan operates, I have to believe that tepid is the right word because I have never, not one time on this show, been told or reported that Utah would be excited to leave the Pac-12 because they're not. I've never, not one time, heard or reported on this show that Utah wants to leave is excited, is willing to. But I agree with what was just said by Jake. Utah doesn't have a choice. The phone's ringing and they have to answer it. I believe what my sources are telling me, which is that Utah's response has been tepid. And I am told that the Utah response has been, we are committed to giving George and his team a chance to finish out this process with the TV deal. And that's going to happen tomorrow now. And we already know that Utah has, in our opinion, from what we've been told, made it clear that they feel like they are a better fit in the Pac-12 than they are in the Big 12. But again, I want to make this clear because I know Utah people watch this show. I know people up in Salt Lake City, Utah, watch this show at the university. We have asked you to comment. We have asked Mark Harlan to come on this show over a dozen times. We have asked Taylor Randall to come on this show over a dozen times. They have unequivocally refused at any time. So if Utah is doing something different, we have asked and they have refused to answer. But the people we are talking to are highly connected. And I would ask you to check our track record. We have been pretty fucking accurate. And... If you look at the numbers that are now being reported on this Pac-12 TV deal, that it's $20 million and it is 80% streaming, I think that's exactly what we were reported on this show for about 11 months. Thanks. And it's unfortunate. But again, if you are Utah and Arizona State, it's time to pick up the phone and listen. I'm not saying it's time to go. It's time to pick up the phone and listen. Because tomorrow... At noon, it's probably too late. Agreed. I think it's probably too late tomorrow at noon because your constituents in the Pac-12 are going to be making these decisions the moment that George utters those numbers. Yep. So this is this is the problem with being, by process, dead silent in this situation. If you're, if you're Utah, I am just going to continue to say, Utah, you are better than this, so be better than this. If Utah gets left in this conference with $20 million a year, that is a shame and it is a dereliction of duty. It is irresponsible. And I don't believe that Mark Harlan, who I continue to say is the best athletic director in the country, Mm -hmm. I don't believe that he's derelict in his duty and I don't believe he's irresponsible. And I think Taylor Randall is 100% standing behind Mark Harlan, who I will also tell you again should be the commissioner of the Pac-12. But now he probably shouldn't get a shot because he should be in the Big 12. Agreed. And I think you can't be left behind. You can't. It's. It, it, I, I don't know... If at this point you're not in, you're not saying to yourself at Utah, all right, yeah, we, we got to get moving here. We got to have conversations. We got to be prepared. Because I think your best point there is, hey... Every other member institution in this conference who has an option knows what their choice is going to be depending on what George says. And I can only say I have asked them to come on the show repeatedly. Over and over and over again. And here's an and unsolicited. Unsolic- and this person I don't believe is listening to our show says to me, it is not true that Utah is not talking to the Big 12. They have told the Big 12 they need to hear the number and then they will make a decision. So that's three people 
un, un, unsolicited texting me telling me the exact same thing. So I have no reason to believe that that's not true. See, that I like. I like that a lot. If Utah truly is in the position where they've had the conversation and they've told Brett, hey, we're, we're open to coming to the conference. We just we, we, we need to hear the number. And then we will inform you what we're going to do. I'm fine with that. I think that's proper process. I think that's what Bobby Robbins has done. I think that's what Colorado did. I like. I I I think that's proper. I have no issue with that. And I look at I look at some of the other schools that I would compare to Utah in stature, and I look at somebody like UCF or Houston or like who's got big fo- Cincinnati has huge football wins. I look at UCF. They got themselves to a P5. Are you telling me that it, that they're going to just start cutting their knees out 10 years from now in the Big 12? I'm t- I, I, I don't know. Greg Hawkins, I, all the Utah fans that watch this show, they tell me, and Greg hasn't said this specifically, but just about every Utah fan says that I don't know what I'm talking about and I, you know, I'm a BYU fan. And I'm telling you, if you've ever believed anything, I'm telling you, Mark Harlan's a fucking monster behind the scenes as an athletic director. Agreed, 100%. The guy is not going to sit here and play the violin on the deck of the Titanic. I, I, am, I refuse to believe that. I, I just, I just don't, I don't see that happening. Well, and again, I, I think the other side of it I don't see that, it happening. Yeah, the other side of it that I think no one talks about within that, because I completely agree with that, is that these guys, remember, are all privy to the information. They all have the numbers of what their school is doing now. They all have the numbers of what their school would be doing in another conference. Yes. They, they all have all of that information. So they're not flying blind. They have the information. And I feel as though these schools in the Pac-12 have a certain, they feel they have a certain obligation to hear the number, then make a decision instead of just jumping. All right. Let's spend the last 10 minutes of the show reading your comments. Yeah. Uh, presented by TridayTrading.com. TridayTrading.com slash Monty. Get your 30-day trial membership for 10 bucks worth of a charity donation. Here's why this is significant. A lot of people ask me why you would do this. That $10, that $10 is absolutely, and another one, and a, a, another one from, from a really well-placed source in television saying, I'm watching your show right now. I don't know who thinks that Utah's not answering the phone, but they are simply telling the Big 12 that they need a day or two to negotiate with the Pac-12. Now, negotiate's an interesting word. I don't know why that, would, that word would be there. But that's an interesting word. That may just be a mistype. I don't know. That makes sense to me. Because yeah. all these conversations, I can tell you for certain, happened over the weekend. Yeah, of course. And yeah. the Arizona Board of Regents scheduling a meeting for tomorrow at 3.30 did not happen today. That meeting was scheduled yesterday. at, And they said, hey, what time? Because I was telling you they were all talking behind the scenes. All of these people are talking behind the scenes. Yes. So I'm telling you, the Big 12 has been having ongoing conversations. Yeah. And my belief is, from these people reaching out to me, Utah said I need to get through this meeting on Tuesday. That's what makes sense to me. Need to get through this meeting on Tuesday, see what the number is, then we make a, then we make a, a, a choice, a move, a decision. Yeah, again, and I think that's fine. Yeah. I, I think that's proper. I think yeah. that's what they should be doing. It really, the Utah thing really bothers me because they deserve better. This is what I say about San Diego State fans and alumni. You deserve better than Adela Della Torre, uh, Adela Della Torre and J.D. Wicker. The athletic director of the year who can't seemingly figure out how to get into a P5 without embarrassing himself. And won't be held accountable by doing interviews for the things he's said and done. Most won't do it. Like, you, you, Utah, you have two great administrators. I can't believe they li- let you sit here and twist. They won't. Tridaytrading.com when the market's up. Tridaytrading.com is phenomenal. When the market's down, Tridaytrading.com is phenomenal. Day trading is not about long-term. All the market's down, I lost money. No, you lost money because you were in it long-term. Day trading is in and out. They give you the tools to do that. Algorithms, processes, and software. The highest level of coaching and education you can get. And it's not over as soon as you graduate the program. That coaching and education is continuing. You always have a support system, so much so that when you graduate the TridayTrading.com program, they fund an account for you 
where you trade with TridayTrading.com's money, and when you make money with their money, you keep 80% of the profit. TridayTrading.com, get a $10 30-day trial membership, and you get access to the entire program for 30 days. No holds barred, no strings attached. And I always tell people at the end of that 30 days, you can walk away. I don't know a single listener of the hundreds who have gone to TridayTrading.com. I don't know a single listener who's walked away after the 30-day trial is over. Not one, because it's a phenomenal program. Make yourself $1,000 a day trading full-time. Three to $500 a day trading part-time. All automated, all while you're out golfing, make yourself money. While you're at work during the day, that system's making you money all day long. Come home, you made three to $500, your car payment's made. Yep. It's awesome, dude. Tridaytrading.com. Run the table. Let's finish off with your comments. Um, Hayden Maxwell. Utah F themselves going to the Big 12, pissing off Brett Yormark. I don't believe they ever pissed off Brett Yormark. Nope. Never. Uh, Harry Austin. At what point does the Big 12 say Oregon State is in and Utah is out? Soon. Soon. Because he can't go to 13 or 15. Nope. You're going to 14 or you're going to 16. And again, I think Bobby Robbins holds all the cards on that. Because if he says, we're not coming if you don't invite Arizona State, they're inviting Arizona State. And if they go to 15, they got to find a 16. And I think that's Utah. And I still maintain Oregon State's been one of the most aggressive universities trying to get new affiliation. They called the Big Ten. We were told last week that the Big Ten said, hey, we, we appreciate the phone call. We're doing our homework. They called the Big 12. I was told the Big 12 was interested and has been interested for some time, but not if they can get Arizona State, Arizona, and Utah. Yeah. yeah. Which makes total sense. Yep. So, uh, remember, Big 12 wants uh, members that want to be in the Big 12. Oh, I think, I don't think there's any doubt that's a comment for Oregon, not Oregon State. I think that's a really good point. Mark Rucker for two bucks. Utah to the pack as Juliet was to Romeo. Ooh. Ooh. I hope not. I, I, I fully admit I over I probably have too much confidence in Brett Yormark um as a commissioner, but man, I can't believe he passes on on Utah if they're available. No. Nah, no. I can't nope. Mm, nope. That'd be tough. Uh Tad Schroeder. Okay. Truck stop conference about to run over the Pac twelve. <laughs> Everybody is outraged. We've been waiting for those jokes. Good on you, Tad. Uh, Mark Wilson gives us $10. Thank you very much. Let's read some, uh, let's see. Tanner Plummer. Well, your mark hasn't given us too much of a reason to not have confidence in him. He really hasn't. Yeah. And I would say the same thing about Mark Harlan and Taylor Randall. Yep. Uh, Cowboy Country. ESPN and Fox care about TV ratings. The quote, Holy War will con consistently bring 3 million plus viewers. BYU and Utah need to be in a conference game. I well, completely agree with that, dude. I don't know that that's a a uh, a motivation right this second, but I do think it is a a big time um, side effect, shall we call it, a cherry on top, a topper, uh, you know, a thing. A thing. It, it's an item on the on the on the sheet as to why Utah to the Big Twelve makes sense. Ooh, the Cubs made another trade. Uh, they pick up Jose Cuas from Kansas City. Really. The Cubs are going for it. Good. The Cubs are going for it. They're, they, when you add pitching at the deadline, they added Jimer Candelaria from the Nationals earlier. And I think it's really interesting uh, that the Cubs are going for it. And, uh, and I, don't, I hope I'm not saying his name wrong, but uh, Kuas is... God. Dude, the text message machine right now is, is crazy. So I apologize, but it is uh, it is going to be very interesting to see what the Cubs end up doing. Um, he is a guy that it has a zero point three WAR and a four fifty four uh, ERA, three and O this year. Um, so his last five games, he's given up four earned though. You don't love that, but he's a young kid too. Yeah. I'm excited. The Cubs are making deals, man. Yeah. Are you surprised? Uh yeah, a little bit. A little bit. You are. It's about time they started investing, but we'll see. Again, I still maintain you have to you have to win games now. 
it's not good enough just to add and then not and, and be, you know, six and twenty down the stretch. Yep, forty five games. He's given up six bombs. He's he's not terrible. He's good. That's a that's a good add to your bullpen. Gold Cubs. Jeremy Lindley. Uh, so Oregon and Washington are out of the picture. I think in the Big Twelve they may be. They may be. Uh, Tom. D- oh, hey, comment dump. Pluto says long as the Cubs finish higher than the Cardinals, I'm good. Man, oh, I was hoping the will. Cardinals would trade. Nolan Arenado, but apparently they're hanging on to him. What are the Yankees going to do? Because they are getting shellacked again. This time at the stadium by Tampa, it's now 4-1. to one. Tampa is just rolling over them. Uh, Purple Haze says, sounds like Arizona will be moving pretty soon. I would agree with that. Tom Dean says, Big 12 at 31.7. Big 12 with uh, Colorado and Arizona, 35. Well, the number doesn't go up, but they're willing to pay. So, yeah. Spencer Williams says 12 could stay at 15 and wait, stay, uh, stay open for ACC. Nah. Uh, I think you strike when you Just can. Just not necessary. Roger Abbott says, hey, Chicago, what do you say? Cubs are going to win today. I agree. Hit the music because your, your pop's floating, bro. Yeah, bro. You guys, you're flipping amazing. Tomorrow's another huge show. Yeah, I would be here for tomorrow. I so would be here for be tomorrow. No doubt about that. BYU Border gives us $2 to say Utah disregarded the rivalry. Keep it non-com. There you go. Hey, you guys. Love every one of you, man. Thanks for making this one of the top 5% of sports streams on all of YouTube. YouTube. A massive history-making day in college football tomorrow. Don't miss a second of the Monty Show. Until tomorrow, say goodbye, Jake. Goodbye, Jake.